Now I'll just show you what you can achieve on your week in Christmas Island. It's not all about the bonefish, there's plenty of other things to do as well. With Christmas Island's vast array of, of sand flats, we, we get around usually on boats of various sizes. Now, there's a couple of ways to find bonefish on the flats of Christmas Island. One is just to really slowly walk um, very quietly and you will see the bonefish generally feeding up current. The other way is to get to a nice little area which will essentially have a nice little channel or something run through it and the fish will treat that as a highway. But trust your guides because they know where the fish are going to be on that particular tide. You'll notice a bit of sign language you've got to learn before you come in. Big strip, short strip, get it in and worry about another fish. Yep. Uh, once they realise that they're not in control, and they just go back in that other direction. In Christmas Island they do uh, uh, their week long trips because there's only at this stage just one flight in and out per week. So they will fly from Fiji, drop us off here and that plane continues on to Honolulu. Yeah, nearly. Now he's here. Nice one eh? Yeah. Beauty. Beauty. That's wow. fun, right? That is, eh? You, you will struggle to see, but through the back there, that is just massive, isn't it? That's, uh, wow. that's, uh, that's a thumper. That's a thumper. <laughs> uh, straight up. Okay. Yeah? It's on it. Come on. There. Excellent. Good. That was pretty good, mate. <laughs> so just they're working their way up from that deep water up into these flats as the tide comes in. And that crab had a, had a hook in it. Perfect. And the power is just incredible that you will find as you're winding these fish in. I mean, you get a, a decent rod. That's why I use an eight weight to stalk it current. It's got plenty of go in it, so you can steer them around. And uh, we'll just work him way back in as you love that clunk clunk as that uh, fly line comes back onto the reel. It makes you feel a little bit more uh, relaxed than having everything way out. Almost heading back out to sea. Many fish is a good fish, but once you start getting them, you know, above, I guess, three pounds, it's going to be a bone fish that, I mean, there you go, you're into the backing. Again, and that's a pretty solid sort of a drag we've got on there as well. So it'll take a sizable fish to, to do that. And it just makes it great fun, you know, to be out here. I, I just I just love the place. We do a lot of trips to Christmas Island because it is the best in the world for this style of fishing. And you're not limited to this either. I mean, like I have a ball catch and bone fish because it's all sight fishing. But, but if you go out, you know, the ocean just there, you've got tuna, you've got sailfish, wahoo, you've got the whole sort of shooting match. And inside here we've got GTs, triggers, um, it's just literally endless and it's like uh, on the doorstep of Ikari House. So uh, if you get a chance and you're a fly fisherman, get across here and do it. Spend a week here, it'll be something you're never going to regret. There you go, into that backing again. And I shouldn't really grizzle because I've got no appointments today so I really don't have to be anywhere. So. Uh, yeah, if it takes a little bit of extra time, that's okay too. And they certainly do get them bigger than this, but this is still great fun in itself to get a, a lovely bone just so thick across the back. That's a, a good solid fish, and that's probably three and a half to four pounds. And uh, just incredible power from his tail and through his back section there. And when these fish are front on, you can certainly see them. Like perhaps green, they turn side on chrome like that and they just blend in there that's why they're they call them the ghost of the flats and they're an incredible fish to target and uh that's just a great specimen there just full of power and that mouth you can just see that he tilt up jump on any crabs and, and things like that and, and certainly crush those so a powerful fish so that's a beauty have you got it yeah right there we go so we've got one we've had the teasers <laughs> going there and we've had a couple of fish come up to them so you've got to just rip those teasers back out and then that fly's got to get down there this one you've still got plenty of go whoa there he is 
That is amazing. That's a belter. Absolute belter. All good. Okay. Yes, he's got it, and he's got it, and he's got it! Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. 20, we'll go 20. You always exaggerate, Simon. Especially, yeah, yeah. yeah, round it up, never down. Anyway, we'll put him back. Thanks, mate. A ripper, absolute ripper. Very good. Thanks, mate. That's him. Yep. Yep. Doesn't know he's hooked yet. If Simon. Oh, now he's. Oh, gee, gee, that power. You've got to love these trigger fish. Just incredible. Yep. They've either got to be strong or fast. And some of them are both. Yeah, they're, they're, they're targeted because they, you have, they're so cautious. And everything's got to be done properly to be able to get them to take, you know. Well done, lovely trigger. Good job. Is that it? Mustachio. Yeah. Mustachio. We've got the little moustache there. Very good. He's a, a thumper. Right Come on. Come on. Come on, one is. Yeah! That's it. Oh, no. Here we go. And that's, uh, that's tuna fishing. And then we get it on to there. And, and it's amazing how quickly the backing comes out. And he's only a little one too. But they're just powerful fish. I mean, it's just incredible power. The only thing he hasn't got written is TW Sharon on the, uh, the side of that. And he's pumped up to full pressure. Just whip. Anyway, just, just whip it out there. Yeah. Let it sink. And... Yeah, yes. good. There we go. Oh, my mate. <laughs> this is milk fishing. This is not bad, eh? No. This is very good. Very good. They're, they're up feeding on the surface, and that's what gets a lot of like fly fishermen excited. You know, their backs out of the water. Yeah, oh, that's a better one. This one's good. Focus on that, but just essentially would look like a little bit of uh, weed or scum, and that's what does the trick. Yeah, so. Nice little uh, Christmas Island milkfish, he's probably about 15, 17 poundy. Hard to, there's a little bit of guessing involved. We've had uh, quite a few casts of these fish and we thought maybe the fly wasn't right, but yep. this bonefish thought it was right, and so that was good. And it's just great fun. I mean, it's uh, a word I use a lot is challenging, and that's what it sometimes can be. Sometimes you can walk up and just throw the cast, the fish eats it, you know, everybody's happy. But at other times you've got to vary your retrieve, you know, and it also might be a different fly even to go down tippet size, the same as what you would in trout fishing, you've got to do that at times on these bonefish, and the rewards are there when you get it all right. Give him a little bit closer, and he'll realise we're human, and off again. And they might have two or three runs, and then they're, uh, then they're a little bit buggered, but uh, just plenty of power, particularly great fun on this shallow water because they've just got to go distance rather than just down. So a great fighting fish. And it's just something you've got to do at least once in your life to come bone fishing. And I think Christmas Island's the best place in the world to do that. And you've just got everything on offer. I mean, Akari House is by far the best uh, resort to be staying at. They've got all the facilities there that we've become accustomed to. And good boats too, which is uh, quite a, 
a benefit of having a fast boat to get you to the places you need to go. Not massive, but just stunning fish, just with that tail, all that power, and these are just so full of muscle. Not like a, a sloppy little lake fish that doesn't have to work hard. These are fit fish, 